good morning children in the last class we were already started the discussion with respect to the the brief account of the evolution in that one we were discussed about the different geological periods with respect to the time scale from modern to ancient also we were discussed about the there is nothing but cenozoic era mesozoic era paleozoic era with respect to the system and periods series and epochs and some distinct features and also a year before the present these are all things we were discussed in the earlier class in this class we will continue the very interesting topic so that is nothing but origin and evolution of the man okay so here you know very well that you must have heard about the number of cases the man from monkey so how this concept is arised so that is nothing but the origin and evolution of the man okay so that today we will study about in detail about the origin and evolution of the man it has been approved beyond doubt that man shares many characters in common with you know the lemurs monkeys and apes which are included under the group of primates so that means these i mean the common organisms lemurs monkeys and apes they shows the similar characteristics so that's why including we we are included are considered under the primates so you know what are the characteristic features of the primates the skull isn't it and even enlarge the forehead the nasal cavities with respect to the eyes cavities isn't it eye sockets generally the eyeballs are placed under the eye sockets and even the mammillary glands so these are all the some of the characteristics so general characteristics of the primates so that's why including human beings lemurs monkeys and apes which are included are considered under the primates and there are evidences to show that the both apes and man have a common primitive ancestor the word hominid is used to describe the a total member species of human family that have lived since the last common ancestor of both man and the apes the field of science which studies the human fossil record is called paleoanthropology remember this one they will ask for competitive paleoanthropology okay so that means the field of science which studies the human fossil record is called paleoanthropology the evolution of the man can be understood only the availability of the fossils the paleo that is nothing but the paleo means you know study of the fossil things and anthropology that is nothing but human activities isn't it so that's why the evolution of the man can be understood only the availability of the fossils and you know very well that the paleontologist have collected only few fossils it is assumed that the human evolution started around 1515 that is 15 million years ago but man appeared only 3 million years back okay so that's what we are studying recently regating so that means it is assumed that human evolution started 15 million years ago but the man appeared only 3 million years back the available fossil indicates that the human beings originated first in east africa the gradual evolution of the man from a plaque ancestor is fully supported by fossils and to study the evolutionary tree of the man the fossils are arranged in the order of ancestral ape ape man primitive man and modern man okay so let us study one by one in that one so the first one is ancestral ape okay you know while we are studying the origin and evolution of the man the dryopithecus and dromopithecus these two species which is comes under the ancestral app okay so dryopith when it comes to dryopithecus it was an ancestral ape they lived in miocene period 
about 15 million years of ago. They were found in Asia and Europe. So that means he is the first species. Okay. And the Ramopticus. The Ramopticus found in. So that is how it will be. After the Draptikus, the Ramopticus will come. So the Draptikus found in Siwalik Hills of India are called Ramopticus and Shivapticus. One more question also they will ask. So what is Ramopticus? Dryapticus found in Siwalik Hills of India are called Ramopticus and Shivapticus. Those fossils collected from Africa are called Kenyapticus. Are you getting? Then based on the origin where they found the fossils, they named the particular species. They had the slender limb, bones and short arms, jaws and teeth were more common to the human appearance with the development of brain and forelimbs. The Ramapticus could pick up the manipulate the sticks and stones for simple tests such as frightening his enemies. Okay. So if you see the body characteristics, as I said they are hairy, they walked with walked just like gorillas and chimpanzees. Okay, that is nothing but tetrapedal isn't it and the dryapticus is more applied ramapticus more man like so these are all about the common characteristics with respect to the origin okay with respect to the ancestral ape that is nothing but dryapticus and ramapticus so as i said they, they were generally found three to four Okay, so that is means nothing but three to four millions of years ago, they were man-like, the primate in eastern Africa. So these are all the I mean the paleontological evidences. That is nothing but skulls we got already as a paleontological evidences. They had height about four feet, and walked up right. And this belief is based on fossils of the man-like bones found in Ethiopia and Tanzania. Okay, so this is a record uh, based on the, you know, carbon dating, we get uh, exactly the time period also, that is the geological time scale. So, here the characteristics almost all, they look like the similar. I hope you can identify in the slide, they have given the uh, pictures, isn't it? So, after the, I mean the... Uh, ancestral ape that is the Dryapticus and Ramapticus. So next one it is comes under the ape man. Okay, in ape man, so the Australopithecus is the only species which is comes under the ape man. Okay, so they exhibited the characters of the both ape and man. So that's why they are commonly known as the ape man. The ape man is nothing but Australopithecus. So this man, uh, I mean like ape so this man like ape lived in eastern and southern african grasslands it's about a uh, five million years ago okay but in ncrt they were given actually two million years of ago okay so that's what which uh, slightly differs with respect to the uh, ncrt in the competitive books but you should draw while you are writing in the theory, you should write 2 millions of years ago only. And the fossil evidences show that the Australopithecus is intermediate between ape and man. So that means it shows the characteristics of the both ape and man. So that's why he is considered as the, the intermediate between the ape and man. The probability is that the man might have arose from Australopithecus like ancestor okay so these are all some of the characteristics and as I said majorly where he found he lived in East African grassland hunted with the stone weapons he had a habit of eating our fruits okay so these are all about the Australopithecus are you getting okay so that means this man like a lived in Eastern Southern African grassland about 2 million years ago 
when uh, computed they were given 5 million ago the fossil evidences show that australopithecus is intermediate between apes and man the probability is that man might have arose from australopithecus like ancestors okay so these are all about the there is a australopithecus or they are commonly known as the ape man okay so after the ape man we have to discuss about the primitive man so whenever it is comes to the primitive man the origin and evolution of the primitive man so there are three species which is considered under the this primitive man that is homo habilis homo habilis is commonly used as hand man and homo erectus and netherland okay netherthal or netherthal man okay so let us discuss one by one so again the first one is homo habilis so as i said the primitive man these were the first true man as far as the fossil records are concerned these form of the connecting link between australopithecus and modern man and homo habilis is commonly known as the hand man okay the uh, earliest known representative of the true man probably lived in eastern africa about two and a half lakh years back so that is nothing but two millions of years ago he was called the handyman because tools were found with his fossil remains so that is the reason why he called handyman he was called a handyman because tools were found with his fossil remains their capacity was about 650 cc to 800 cc that is cc is nothing but cubic centimeters okay that is nothing but the average brain size of the so this handyman capacity was 650 cc to 800 cc and was the makers of crudely chipped stone tools they probably did not eat meat okay so these are all the characteristic features of the that is homo habilis or commonly known as the handyman okay so if you know the i mean if you just uh, know the uh, briefly about the homo habilis the geological time scale is 2 millions of years ago the first man like being hominid the brain capacity 650 to 800 cc did not eat meat okay so this is about the homo habilis after the homo habilis the next primitive man homo erectus okay homo erectus some hominid fossils were found in java and china in 1891 but they are considered as the next stage and were placed under a, a single species called homo erectus so this is about actually around 1.5 million years of ago okay so they had a brain size of 900 cc and probably they ate meat okay so that means the characteristic features of the homo erectus first of all why he called erectus homo erectus means he started he started the balancing on that is two legs that is nothing but hind limbs so that's why he named as a erectus okay so that's what i said the hominid fossils were found in java and the china in 1891 but they are considered as the next stage and were placed under a, a single species called homo erectus arose about 1.5 million of millions of years ago and they had a brain size of 900 cc there is a cubic centimeter and probably they ate meat okay so this is about the it is a homo erectus the next one is the commonly known as netherthal okay that is a netherthal man so these fossils were collected from netherthal valley of the germany so that's why they were given the same name these fossils were collected from that is netherthal valley of the germany 
with a brine size of 1400 cc lived in east and central asia between 1 lakh to 40000 years back okay so they used the hide to protect their body and buried their dead ones see here during the period of evolution how he learned the civilization okay is the first person or the first species okay so they used to hide to protect their body and buried their dead ones this is the evolutionary characteristic as well as the civilization and as i said the brain capacity 1400 cc okay so 1400 cc lived in east and central asia used hide to protect their body and buried their dead these are all the important characteristic features with respect to the so that is nothing but homo nethertalensis or commonly known as that is netherthal man okay yeah so after that so we have to discuss about the modern man okay modern man so the netherthal man and his contemporaries become extinct and were replaced by homo sapiens and are called modern man okay so please note down for the purpose of the competitive so in ncrt they were given only i mean the after the netherthal man he is directly given about the homo sapiens but the still there are some scientists or the paleontologists argued that so there is another man so that is a modern man actually according to the paleontologist so they are divided into two species the first species is the cro magnon okay cro magnon after that the homo sapiens were arrested okay so that's why you should know about the cro magnon please note down c r o okay a space m a g n o n cro magnon the cro magnon was a fully erect okay so i am telling you please note down the cro magnon was fully erect it's about 6 feet tall with a brain volume of about 1600 cc okay the cro magnon was fully erect 6 feet tall with a brain volume of about 1600 cc his culture still belong to the old stone age in addition to the stone implements he used bone tools bone needles which might have been used to assist the animal skin to used as a garments the dog became his companion you know uh, even nowadays also nowadays also we can find the i mean the very i mean nearest relationships we maintain very good relationship with the pets in that one the first one is the dogs so the dog became his companion okay but still he did not domesticate food animals he was a cave dwelling hunter and did not practice agriculture okay crocmagnon that is a crocmagnon was actually a cave dwelling hunter and did not practice agriculture he developed a remarkable art which was found on the cave walls the oral pattern of the human evolution extend over a period of about 5 million years during which australopithecus evolved into homo erectus which eventually gave rise to the homo sapiens okay so this is how exactly homo sapiens believed that evolved from the cro magnon okay so in ncrt they were when it comes to the modern man they were given directly homo sapiens but uh, when it comes to the competitive you should know about the cro magnon also that's why i'm telling okay yeah so after this one so we have to discuss about the homo sapiens okay you know very well that the homo sapiens arose during ice age between 75000 to 10000 years ago in africa and moved across continents they developed cave art about 18 years ago that is 18000 years ago 
so that means the homo sapiens arose during ice age this is very important between 75000 to 10000 years ago in africa and moved across the continents it is common in the ice age okay then they developed a, a cave or at about 18000 years ago so still we have a, i mean the prehistoric cave or developed by these homo sapiens or modern man and agriculture came around 10,000 years back and human settlements started. The Homo sapiens evolved into other races like that is a Caucasoids, Negrioids and Mangloids. That is a they are commonly known as Mongolioids. Are you getting? So the Homo sapiens evolved into the other races like so please note on that is a that is Caucasoids, C A U C A S O I D, Caucasoid, Negroids, N E G R O I D S, Negroids, and Mongolioids, M O N G O L Y D S, Mongolioids. But the original racial traits became diluted rather rapidly through interbreeding among the extensively migrating human population okay so this is very important so with respect to the the homo sapiens okay so these characteristics see you know uh, very important with respect to the modern man that's what we are uh, studying present and remember the origin and evolution of the man with respect to the sequence of name evolution beginning from Draptikus then after Ramapticus, Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo erectus and Homo netherthalensis. Then after Cro-Magnon and the recent one, the modern man, Homo sapiens. So this is how the sequence of human evolution, okay, we can identify briefly. Okay, and the origin and the evolution of the man, you know, the hominid family. Okay, so here all the are uh, different. Uh, a type of the skulls as we got as a, a paleontological evidences okay so here we can identify the i mean the similarities the maximum similarities between each other so based on this that we can conclude that how the origin and evolution of the man is happened step by step okay so with respect to the <coughs> with respect to the common characteristics as well as the similarities and dissimilarities Okay, so and remember the average brain size of the modern human tends to vary between sources, but a typical value is 1350 to 1400 cc, that is a cubic centimeters. Then the adult man, that is a adult human brain, weighs about 3 pounds, that is 1300 to 1400 gram. The adult human brain is about 2% of the total body weight. The average human brain is 140 mm wide. The average human brain is 167 mm long. So these are all about the origin and evolution of the man. Okay. See uh, here how we can identify the comparison of the skull. Okay. Uh, that is a uh, adult modern human beings. Then the baby chimpanzees, the adult chimpanzees, that is nothing but the a skull of baby chimpanzees is more like adult human skull than adult chimpanzee skulls. So that's why based on the comparison and the similarities and the dissimilarities. Okay, so we can conclude that how exactly the step by step the origin and evolution of the human beings is happens okay so let it be so these are all about the i mean the seven chapter evolution in the next class we will study about the competitive part okay if you are having any uh, still doubts means please message me or call me so that i can clarify your doubts then only we can move towards the competitive the after that we will start the new chapter okay thank you have a nice day